Hello, loved one. Uh, Jane Gonzalez and Patty Lawrence have returned to the studio here at the farm uh, after about a month and a half, or could have been a little bit longer, but the first time they were here, we talked about uh, issue one that was on the August ballot and about the uh, abortion rights and uh, health care initiative that's on the ballot coming up in November. It tur turns out they're both issue one, but we're going to talk about a little bit about the past issue one and about the current issue one that you're going to get a chance to vote on. And I, di I did want to mention that the, uh, the deadline for registration to vote in November is coming up pretty soon. It's October 10th. And then the early vote starts on the 11th of uh, October, and then election day is November 7th. So this issue is is coming aboard pretty quickly, and people start voting pretty soon on it. Uh, so I wanted you to uh, talk about the reaction to the overwhelming defeat of issue one, where the Constitution was going to be changed to make it harder to put things on the ballot and harder to pass things if they made it to the ballot. So what was your reaction that morning and a couple of days after? We were definitely watching the tally that night. Um, we were we were pretty excited as, as precinct um, results came in. And and really, I think it just showed how smart Ohio voters are. That, you know, I think the state legislature tried to pull one over on the voters and assume that they would um, give up their rights or that they wouldn't be paying attention because of a special August election. And Ohio ones overwhelmingly said, we want our voice heard and we want checks and balances on the state legislature and we understand what's going on. So I really thought it was a testament to how smart voters are and how much they are paying attention. Yeah. And we were excited because, I mean, we obviously worked very hard to, yeah. to get it defeated. So um, it, it was nice to know that people were listening. Yeah, we, we talked earlier about... Uh, I had some thoughts the next day about when I tallied up Loveland votes in the Loveland precincts and about how overwhelming the vote was. And uh, I've been reminded of something that a friend of mine told me once, Mike Schaller, that nothing beats a lie. Right. And there were so many untruths told about what, what the vote was going to be about that uh, I suspect a lot of people just they're lying to me, and they knew it, like you're saying, Patty, they were smart, they knew it, but they, knew uh, it. they don't like to be lied to, and they don't like people to tell them something that's not true, and uh, especially elected officials that have a responsibility, yeah. election officials have a responsibility to tell the truth. Um, so, Jane, why did people vote that initiative down in, in the fashion they did? Um, I, I think they figured out that, the, again, it was a power grab. Um, it was uh, framed as an anti-abortion um, bill in August, but it was really uh, the, the fact that they were trying to take away the citizens' right to bring legislation. And that's the one place that we can have action and speak as a group that the legislators really don't have control over. So they have so much control over the rest of the state with gerrymandering and everything else that uh, it, it was a blatant power grab and they made it about an issue that it's not. And they're doing the same thing with issue one now. They're trying to muddy the waters about what exactly is going to be in this law and they are trying to, you know, use scare tactics and bring up all kinds of uh, false information about what's going to be in issue one in November. So hopefully uh, we have the same reaction. I think people will do their homework. I think they'll read the actual, ba um, the actual language uh, that the Attorney General uh put in that qualified and what we're what we're voting on versus what uh Frank LaRose is trying to do with issue one and muddy muddy the language with the actual language on the ballot mm -hmm. is not the law. So if, if I would ask you uh to give me a two or three word answer, what is issue one being called? What are you calling it? Abortion rights amendment? Uh, reproductive, reproductive rights. Reproductive yeah. rights I mean, it's, it's the right to reproductive freedom reproductive with protections freedom. for for health care and, and safety. You've got what's 
ended up to be the final language. It's going to be on the ballot. That's a decision now that I don't think is going to change. But yeah, and right. they took it to court, and so the, the language on the ballot is is still different than the language that was on the petition that people signed, that the Attorney General approved, and what will actually be the law. Yeah. But then Frank LaRose took some of that language and made it much more yeah. inflammatory, so the, and that's what's going to be on the ballot when right. you walk in yeah. so on November 7th. we walk, talk through about what issue one is, and it is reproductive freedom with production with protection for health and safety. It basically accomplishes five things. The right to contraception, the right to fertility treatment, the right to continue one's own pregnancy, miscarriage care, and abortion. So it's those five things that is on the, that will become law or become part of the Constitution when issue one passes. Uh, so I, I, I guess your your duties for the next several weeks are to tell people exactly what they are voting on. Yes. Right. Because you are voting on, yeah, you're I'm sorry. As much as tell them the reasons to vote one way or right. the other is to tell them what they're actually voting yeah. on. So if you say this is what it is, then you want to talk about what it's not. What, what, <laughs> what it's not, the misinformation out there at this point is that it will allow abortions up to birth, which is is not a thing. Physicians take an oath and they have a duty to support the, the, the life of their patients. Um, so they can determine fetal viability through science. It's not just a, okay, this week's, right? Mm. So their reasons for inducing or early deliveries would be a fetal anom a, a not anomaly or um, a medical reason that the you know, mother's life was in danger. So that's the only reason they can do it. It's um, not going to enable anybody that's an abuser. That's one of the things that's going around. It's not, has doesn't have anything to do with gender-related health care. Um, it's not written into the language. There is no invalidation of parental consent. That's a big one out there. They're going to say that, that the children can be taken from the schools or can take it. Anybody can take your child and they can get uh, a medical treatment without parental consent. You cannot get an aspirin in this, in this state if you're under 18 from a physician or a hospital unless you have parental consent. So it's, there's, there's a lot of muddying of the waters. Um, and I think anybody who wants to actually know what this is about will just go read the amendment. The language is plain. It doesn't mention parental yeah. control. It doesn't mention... The, um, yeah. Read the amendment itself, which is very short, yes. versus reading what the ballot well, will say. The ballot was, again, yes. Cause so, Frank, so the Attorney General approves the law because it has to be lawful and it has to, to uh, you know... There's other statutes that it needs to agree with sometimes. So all that goes through the process. And before there's even that first petition, um, we got the petition. It's on the ballot. So then our Secretary of State, who's in charge of the actual elections, elections and ballot language, came in and, and made it very inflammatory. So some of his language is... Um, that's on the ballot. He talks about um, the the fact that you're he put actually put allowing abortions up to birth. That's going to be on the ballot, but that's it's not true. Yeah. Um, so there was language just like that that got the people took it to court, but that's still going to be what's actually on the ballot when you walk into the voting booth or when you get your your mail in yeah. ballot. So. It's not going to be what's reflected in the law. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was another just deliberate attempt to muddy, lie to voters. I mean, muddy to the, the waters. Uh, you yeah. can say muddy the waters, lie to voters. Lie, I mean, there's, yeah. there is so much information out there. And because Ohioans are pretty much overwhelmingly pro choice, mm -hmm. and, um, y you know, probably 60, about 60% of Ohioans are pro choice, they're just doing a misinformation campaign. 
an intentional misinformation campaign to confuse people or to lie to people about what this is about to defeat it. So they're not being honest with the voters again. And with the defeat of the issue that they put on the ballot in uh, August, there is only a 50% plus one vote threshold Correct. now right. instead of what they had hoped to be a 60% 60%. threshold. So with looking at uh, the stats and, and polls and so forth about how people are interested in protecting reproductive rights, it seems like the 50% threshold is... Yeah, I'm should, should yeah, it should kind pass. Of a, a good should hurdle pass. Right. to get over. Right. So. Yeah, and I th and again, people just um, recognize that o Ohioans overwhelmingly are pro-choice and believe that women's health care should be left to the woman and the doctor and not to the politicians. You know, that's a very personal, private, painful decision that does not have room for our state legislature in there. Have you been knocking on doors again? You started passing out. Just what started. Are you, is there, do, you, do you have a good feeling yet when you knock on a door and talk to somebody? I, I am, so far I still say that it's overwhelming that, that the, the people at the doors do not believe that government should be in their medical decisions. Right. And they also don't believe that the government should be putting laws on women's bodies. I mean, regardless of how you feel about abortion, women should not have laws on their bodies and that is what this legislation does and people are not they they're not happy about that either i mean this is a blatant power you know, this is about controlling women um so we need to have to set another date to come back <laughs> and, and talk about the results of yes. issue one again but um, what I said, november november 7th yeah. and again this this bill and just to reiterate is about five things the right to contraception, the right to fertility treatment, the right to continue your own pregnancy, miscarriage care, and a lot of late-term abortions are um, putting women in a place where their lives are at risk. And, you know, what do you do? And not waiting for a woman to be in a medical crisis that could be prevented by an abortion until she's infected or crashing or whatever, and waiting until someone's life is, is um, in jeopardy and the right to abortion, the right to choose. So really, it's about those five things. It's not about anything else. Okay. All right, well, I'll see you in a few days. Thank maybe you. I'll, maybe I'll see you <laughs> out in the neighborhood. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. we were knocking on your door. Okay, thanks again for coming in again. Thank you. I really Good. appreciate Thank it. Thank you very I much. I hope the viewers appreciate it. Um, get some of this straightened out and... Uh, I think all, if all they have to do is read the amendment. Yes. So the yeah. actual amendment. The actual amendment. And issue, it's issue one, and it's a vote yes. Okay. And we'll, we'll put that in the story, and you, people can see how short it is. And so it's going to be pretty a pretty easy right. read. Right. Uh, yeah. This language was intentionally drafted to be very tight and very unambiguous. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, see you soon, Loveland. Uh, and uh, get out there and vote, I guess, huh? Thanks for having Thank us. You. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you very much.